the Sacramento Kings will climb the Western Conference ladder this upcoming season because the Utah Jazz have blown it up officially. What is going on, everybody? Sacktown Pete back at it again. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Happy Friday to everybody. I hope everyone's having a great morning. We had some fireworks happen yesterday, and boy, oh boy, uh, the Utah Jazz and the Cleveland Cavaliers have agreed to terms to trade star Donovan Mitchell to the Cleveland Cavaliers in exchange uh, the full trade uh, for Laurie Marketing, uh, Oker Egbagji, Colin Sexton, three unprotected first round picks, and two pick swaps, according to ESPN sources, as Wojnarowski tweets that out yesterday. And he also went on to say that Sexton has agreed to a sign and trade deal to join Utah. Um, Cleveland is sending three unprotected first round picks to Utah in 25, 27, 29, pick swaps in 26, 28. Sources tell ESPN, along with Rudy Gobert trade with Minnesota, Utah has gathered 13 unprotected or lightly protected picks throughout 2029. That is crazy, man. Uh, just to trade picks and a couple young players and uh, Colin Sexton, Lauren Marketing, uh, for an all-star elite talent level caliber in Donovan Mitchell. Uh, congratulations to the Cleveland Cavaliers. They did a highway robbery on the Utah Jazz. They fleeced them, man. And this is crazy. Uh, Donovan goes to Cleveland. He's got a good young team around him that are hungry. Uh, the Cavaliers were in the hunt, making it close to getting in the playoffs this past season, but last season, should I say, and they didn't make it. But Donovan Mitchell, no time, no doubt about it, big-time player, three-time player, three-time NBA All-Star, will put him over the hump. He's got three years left on his deal, and I love the fit with him and Darius Garland and the backcourt. I think he's going to make Garland elevate his game and into stardom. And I like Jarrett Allen as well. And I like the young star and Evan Mobley. They got a good roster, and they're going to be good for years to come. So what does this mean for the Sacramento Kings? A star in Donovan Mitchell is out. Utah Jazz are blowing it up. They've blown it up officially with this trade, and they have draft picks. They have draft picks. They're investing on the future, and they're not going to be very good this upcoming season. And the Sacramento Kings, on paper, they should be better than the Utah Jazz. Uh, they are better than the Utah Jazz after this trade. Uh, and they should be climbing the Western Conference ladder if you're the Sacramento Kings. Uh, Utah's out of the equation. Um, Blazers, on paper, I think we're better than them. We'll see how that goes because they still have Damian Lillard in Portland. Um, OKC is not going to be as good as uh, which without Chet Holmgren because he, they lost him for the rest of the year. And I... Just like the Sacramento Kings' chances, um, they should be guaranteed a play-in game uh, this upcoming season. Uh, that shouldn't be the goal. The goal is obviously getting the playoffs and being the playoff pitcher. But the play-in uh, game, it's realistically a realistic option. And the playoffs are a realistic option as well. Uh, this team needs to make this this big climb in the Western Conference, on the Western Conference ladder, man. Um, anytime... A team like the Utah Jazz, what they did yesterday, just finally blew it up, blew up their core players. And they still have pieces that they might be open to moving. You know, Mike Conley Jr. might be on the move. Um, you know, Boyan Bogdanovich might be on the move. And a couple other pieces. Uh, it just seems like they are going young. They're out of the playoff picture. And I think that they, it's pretty clear that they want to invest in the future and uh, to get another high draft pick uh, next year's NBA draft. So I want to hear from your guests because uh, if the Kings don't make this jump, if they are not better than the Utah Jazz and other surrounding teams in the hunt, because like right now, realistically speaking, guys, I see them better than the San Antonio Spurs. No disrespect to Greg Popovich. He's a legend. He's uh, one of the GOATs. But despite him running the show there in San Antonio, I still generally believe that we are a better team. Um, I think we're better than the Portland Trailblazers as well. And I think we're now, we're better than the Utah Jazz. We're better than OKC, that's for, for sure. I think uh, on paper, and even just uh, looking at their OKC's roster, they got nice pieces, but they're relatively young and experienced. And I think that the Kings um, have made, they invested in experienced pieces that have been in the hunt in the playoffs. Uh, we talk about Kevin Herter and, uh, you know, Kent Bazemore coming back. Um, we talk about Malik Monk shootings. Uh, ability. Uh, the Kings are better than the teams I just mentioned, guys, and they should have no problem 
securing a play-in game. Uh, the team, uh, the two teams that I'm, I'm not worried. I'm kind of am worried about. Uh, they should definitely. They're gonna have some battles, and that is uh, playing the New Orleans Pelicans. I expect them to be a lot better with Zion healthy this season, because they were uh, they got in last season, and uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, we'll see what happens there because uh, there's a lot of rumors going on with them with uh, Towns and you know them possibly moving DeAndre Russell. Uh, we know we got they got Rudy Gobert and that defense down in the interior defense down in the paint with uh, Rudy Gobert is going to be tough. But I really do think that the Kings are going to put up good battles against the Wolves and the Pelicans. And I think those two teams are pretty much uh, standing in their way from getting in the top eight. Um, even the Lakers, I'll throw the Lakers in there as well. I totally forgot about the Los Angeles Lakers and LeBron James because they didn't make the playoffs last season. The Los Angeles Clippers didn't make it last season. So the Sacramento Kings have their work cut out for them. You know, when it comes to those two, the both of the L.A. teams not making it and uh, fighting for uh, battling with the Wolves and the Pelicans. But they should have no problem advancing, climbing the ladder in the Western Conference and being better than the Jazz, OKC, and the uh, Jazz, OKC, and the Portland Trailblazers. So that's just my take, guys. Uh Let's hope that that is the case, that they should be pushing forward and they should be a lot better than these teams. And they should give themselves a chance to get in the play in for sure and then give themselves a chance to get in the top eight because that's what you're playing for at the end of the day. And I think the Kings, I like their chances. I honestly do. I think this team's going to be hungry. I like their uh, their working and building chemistry together. They're, these off this whole summer, they've been grinding. And uh, I think the players want it badly to break this drought. And I think the drought will be broken this upcoming season. So this trade is great news for the Sacramento Kings. If you're a Sacramento Kings fan, it's, it's been a great two days. And the Sacramento Kings uh, should be a playoff caliber team this upcoming season. So with that being said, that's going to do it for me for today's video. I really do appreciate you guys tuning in. You guys take care. God bless. Keep pushing forward. Have a great rest of your Friday. Have a great, safe, long weekend. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.